I am Dr. Shomik Kosh, one of the visiting consultants of Bhagirathi Neotia Women and Child Care Center. Today we shall be enlightening your good selves about fever, why it happens to a human being and how much should we be careful about fever. Now the human body is connected to the external atmosphere through certain openings like the nose and the mouth. We use the nose to breathe, we use the mouth to eat, but not everything that enters the nose or the mouth is desirable for the human body. So the human body has certain protective reflexes by which it tries to throw out anything that enters the human body. So supposing something alien enters the nose, how would I throw it out? I would sneeze or I would cough. Or if it enters my oral cavity, I might vomit, I might even have loose motions. Now, most of the germs who enter through these roots are expelled from the human body through these protective reflexes. But what happens to the germs who overcome these protective reflexes and they come and enter the human body and become part of the bloodstream that is flowing through different organs of the body. That is when this germ becomes an infection of the human body. Once a germ has entered the bloodstream, then it becomes the job of the white blood cells on the human body to trap these germs, kill the germs and liberate the toxins from within the germs. When the liberation of toxins takes place, that is when the human body develops fever, that is a temperature that is more than the basal metabolic rate of the human being. Right? So once, so fever, if you look at the genesis of it, is an indication, J, the white blood cells of the human body are actively killing the germ and they are liberating the toxins of the germ. To illustrate this point a little better, if you look at a newborn baby, they can also have an entry of a germ. They have inadequate sneezing reflexes, inadequate coughing reflexes and the germ may spread to the rest of the body very easily because their white blood cells are not very mature. So in newborn babies, we get neonatal sepsis within six hours of the entry of the germ and we lose a lot of these babies. They don't have any rise of temperature. If you have a person who is very aged in your home, 80, 90 years of age, they have a similar story. The germ enters, the person becomes unwell very, very soon, gets admitted to hospital, has multi-organ failure and no fever in between. So, if a person is having fever, the first thing for everybody to understand is that the defense mechanism of the human body is at work. Fever is not going to last a life long as far as human beings are concerned. It will last till such time that the last germ isn't killed in the human body. So if supposing you have a viral upper respiratory tract infection, it will last you something like three or five days. If you have a bad typhoid fever, the fever may last even for up to two to three weeks. If you have something like tuberculosis, which is left untreated, you might have fever for even six months. It entirely depends upon the time that the human body takes to kill the last germ and eliminate it from the human body. So the next question which comes is, how much should we be treating fever? So once we've understood that fever is an immune response or it is a response of the human body to kill the germ, we, the importance goes not so much in controlling the fever as in understanding fever. So previously, with the rise of temperature, we had a host of medications which used to be used in the form of aspirin, ibuprofen, methanemic acid, 
and even paracetamol. But now the usage of medicines is getting restricted. We do not use any medications unless and until the fever is causing a huge discomfort to the patient concerned. We wait till even 100, 101 degrees before we administer any medicine to reduce the fever. Because all it is doing is it's reducing your discomfort. It's just allowing you to function more comfortably while you are having the illness. It is not curing the illness. Secondly, we must remember that none of these medicines that are being used to control fever are without side effects. Even something like paracetamol, if you use it more frequently than every six hours, it can damage the liver. Plenty of patients out of anxiety, out of a panic, administer paracetamol even at two hourly intervals. Now that is not going to either help this child recover quicker or is the child going to be well sooner than the natural course of the illness is going to dictate, right? So it's very important for me to understand that fever only needs to be controlled for comfortable functioning of the activities of daily living. It will only go when adjuvant therapy for elimination of the germ is instituted, right? The next thing which we have seen in practice is other than the use of medications, whenever there is fever, people tend to pour water, sponge the child and they are in a tearing hurry to bring down the temperature. Now even this is not required. If at all you need to sponge the, the individual with fever, it should be at a temperature which is as close to normal human body temperature so that there isn't much of a difference. So what is recommended is, is actually lukewarm water to be used during sponging. The other aspect about fever which needs to be understood is that there is an indiscriminate use of antibiotics presuming that the fever or rather all fever is being caused by bacteria. Now one must understand very clearly that antibiotics can only act against bacteria. There could be other germs, primarily viruses where you do not need any of these antibiotics, whether you use it or not, they are going to be a spontaneous resolution within about three days, five days, seven days, depending upon how long the body will take in killing the viruses. Antibiotics are not going to help this person recover earlier than usual. While we are talking about fever, the final thing I think so which really scares a lot of parents with fever is the concept of convulsions that take place with fever. Now this is something of course about which parents need a little bit of counselling because what happens is as an adult human being even I can have a rise of temperature which can go up to 104, 105, whatever. But I'll have it over a period of time because my brain has certain amount of maturity which will prevent a sudden rise in temperature. But children between till about six years of age, they do not have that brain maturity. So sometimes so many germs enter at one go and the Bodies, WBCs are killing them at such a rapid rate that you can have a sudden rise of temperature even before the parents realize. In this situation, sometimes these children, they can experience a convulsion because the brain has suddenly gone into a hyperactivity. So these are known as febrile convulsions, which are generally not related to development of an epilepsy or a seizure disorder later. They have to be controlled but they generally have a spontaneous resolution within 10 minutes, affects all the four limbs, it is generalized 
and never recurs within the first 24 hours. So once you have this kind of an episode, it can be pretty frightening for the parents and you certainly need to be in hospital for a day or two where you will be explained that if this happens again before six years, what are the steps that need to be taken regarding control of febrile convulsions. Now, these febrile convulsions, most can be controlled at home and warning signs, danger signs, they would be explained to parents. So up to now, I have concentrated on trying to explain to almost everyone that fever is an immune response and how much we need to be doing as far as controlling fever is concerned. To summarize, it's an immune response. Most of the control is for the comfort of the patient so that they can perform their activities of daily living. Fever would only remit on the, when the last germ leaves the human body. That is not to say that fever should be disregarded or it, it is something for which you should not be seeking an attention. Prolonged fever, very high fever, fever which is not coming into control over a certain period of time. Anywhere that you feel nervous about a fever, you must get it assessed by your doctor. It is not the fever which is the worry, it is the underlying infection which is the worry and which needs to be treated by proper assessment by the doctor. The final assess a word that I would like to emphasize about fever is fever, especially in children, is high body temperature. So the insensible losses from the human body are also higher than normal. So it's very important for you to know that you have to keep your child very well hydrated during a course of fever. So if you find that your child is not consuming anything else, during a febrile episode, please make sure you are giving your child enough oral rehydration solution as far as controlling the hydration is concerned. I would end my discourse for today on this particular note. We at the Bhagirathi Neotia Hospital are available, myself and my other consultants, on a regular basis. If you have any further queries, you are most welcome to contact the hospital and you shall have all your queries answered.